This is Twit. Uh, today we're going to go all over the. We're going to talk tell all about the Home Pod, and a lot of this thanks to people who've done a lot of research. Of course, Renee Ritchie and his team at iMore.com with their unreview. There were some early reviews from a variety of people. Um, in the Wall Street Journal, our friend Joanna Stern compared the HomePod to three bagels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it really, that really depends on where you get your bagels. Right, and how much cream cheese you put on it. Yeah. Uh, she also said it was a bagel. It was like a sesame bagel, the bottom of a sesame bagel. Like it, it had promise, but it didn't have all the seeds yet. I'm not sure what she meant by that, but... <laughs> Uh, Nilay Patel in The Verge said, I am a speaker buff and this is the best speaker ever. We even have, for the first time, from thanks to the folks at Reddit, an audio file at Reddit, who has posted measurements of the HomePod. You know, one of, one of the things I always say, and we did a we did a head-to-head -head on a Saturday on the mm -hmm. new screensavers. There's the, uh, there's the Reddit post. Uh, really, really voluminous. Highly recommend it. Until... until Say a non-tech or somebody like that does does their piece. We also have an iFixit teardown in which they used. And look at those numbers. Look at those numbers, my what friends. What do those numbers even mean? I'll tell you in a second. Okay. We also have an iFixit teardown in which they used, much to your chagrin, an Exacto knife and a hacksaw. Mm -hmm. I did not like that. They gave the HomePod a a one out of ten, as low as it can go, rating for repairability. But you knew that already. Well, also, the if you want to get it repaired and you don't have Apple Care, it costs two hundred and seventy nine dollars. Eighty percent of the total price of the three hundred forty nine dollars to buy a new one, two hundred and seventy nine dollars <laughs> to get it fixed. So don't that break is not it. encouraging anyone to fix things. And I really feel like we need to encourage people. This to is fix not. Things. You're not. You don't need to fix this. This is not going to go anywhere. This what if your dog runs by the cord and knocks it over? Well, here's a funny thing about the cord. If you look at the cord in this, it looks like it's really hardwired into this. But some intrepid YouTuber, and and those words go together automatically, mm -hmm. like peanut and butter. They do. Some intrepid YouTuber, show the video. Actually, yanked this out, and it turns out it is removable, but. I don't believe in Do not try abuse. this at home because if you see the amount of force that he had to use to pull this out, I think, yes, the plug will come out. There is a connector. But you're just as likely to pull the wire out of the plug as you are. This is 9 to 5 Max uh, rendering of this. You're just as likely to pull the wire out of the connector as you are the connector out of the HomePod. Mm -hmm. So I think Apple probably has a tool to do this, not your fist. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, but it does. when it comes out, it does come out. It'll ha it has a two-pin uh, connector. W w listen to the audio. This. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? As you can see there. <laughs> it's a little. <laughs> it is removable. You can put it back in like that. But what you'll only be able to do that probably once quick. before you rip the. Oh, jeez. So pulling it out. So you can do that. Don't do that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I, I think there's no user serviceable parts inside. I think you bring like it back to Apple and just pray. I believe in uh, Petho. Petho. People for the ethical treatment of home pods. <laughs> I like it. Petho. Petho. Do not petho my iPod. Petho. Pesp. I don't pesp. know where the O came from. Don't be a pesp. But I guess. Well, home. <laughs> home. <laughs> anyway, petho. petho. Uh, there's a lot of cutting. There's a lot of ripping. Just listen to it. It's meant to be listened to. Are you talking to. about the iFixit? Uh, yes. Um, and also the cord is meant to be touched because uh, it's so supple. It's not like a regular cord. John Gruber's word. I know. He said he John called it simple. clearly... Uh, I was like, what? Okay. It doesn't feel like a regular cord. True. Um, Here's the teardown okay, from my fix it. it. We don't need to watch that. That's I get the point. Yeah. Let me describe I, what you would it, it see. It upsets me. Please don't say inside. that again. There is one woofer. It's only a four-inch woofer. It's in the top here firing up. The woofer does the boom, boom, mm -hmm. bass. But they uh, did... By the way, I should point out that Apple has been hiring speaker designers for about five years. They've been working on this for six years, including the legendary Tomlinson Holman of THX, one of the most famous speaker designers in the world, sound designers in the world. So they did something with the four-inch woofer. It has, it's what they call high excursion. It has a larger-than-usual magnet. By the way, if you heft this, you'll realize everything's larger than usual. This thing is heavy. And that magnet can move the speaker cone a lot, more than a typical woofer that's important because bass means comes from air moving a great volume of air usually bass speakers are large larger the better that's why your subwoofer is large but they're not particularly directional the human ear determines the direction of the sound not from the low end so much a little bit but not so much but from the high end and that's where these tweeters go all the way around there's seven 
mid-range, high-end speakers all the way around. And that means that this, the HomePod will sound great. There's no front. So you might say, oh, the front must be the opposite side of the cord. No, there's no front. It will sound great wherever it is. Apple's instructions are to place it at least six inches away from any surface and obstruction. But then the first time you set it up, and we should show how easy it is to set up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the first time you set it up, it will start playing music. And from then on, when it plays music, it will automatically, uh, using its built-in array mics, those are the mics you're talking to with Siri, it will automatically adjust the acoustics depending on the room. Um, the reviews are very positive for the sound quality. And if we look at the numbers, uh, th this is a very high-quality speaker. There's a guy on Reddit, an audiophile on Reddit, who used a... Uh, now, uh, we have to say it wasn't a completely scientific test. He didn't do it in what we call an anechoic chamber. He did it in his own room. So it's somewhat influenced by the characteristics of his room. But he compared them to some very expensive $1,000 KEF. I think they're the 300 X's, something like that. Their bookshelf speakers are roughly the same size. And he compared it to them and he said, this, which, and by the way, those are considered often reference speakers. This, this HomePod, numbers-wise, compares quite well. And it does. The thing I would really say is it's a great speaker for its size. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid the way Apple's selling this is that it's a great speaker full stop. Mm -hmm. It is a great speaker for its size, but if you but the size of the speaker, there's, you can't over, overwhelm physics. The size of the speaker really does determine, and the design, of course, determine the quality of the speaker. And while Apple has done as well as you could possibly do, I would guess, at a speaker this size, I mean, absolutely as well as you could do, you can't compare this to a, a full stereo system. There's only one of them. You don't have a left and right. You don't have stereo. It doesn't really do stereo imaging. Uh, a stereo speaker and a sub will give you uh, the whole range of music. You know, <laughs> I kind of think of um, sound this way. See if you like this. Okay. There, the... There, if you go to a concert, if you, in fact, I've done this. I remember doing this. Uh, I'll never forget it. Going to the Lucas Ranch, and sitting in the middle of a full orchestra. They were recording music for a, a Sony game, uh, and it was amazing. If you're, and musicians say this. I mean, the, uh, many musicians I know say I don't, I don't like to listen to stereos because I'm used to listening to music in a live situation in in the middle of it. And so, if you go and you sit in the middle of an orchestra, that's the full sound, at least as as well as your ears. And I admit, I'm an old man. My ears, I've years of listening to music too loud and headphones have kind of cut off the high end of my sound. My hearing is not perfect. Uh, but I also am used to listening to music. So I, I know kind of what to listen to. You hear the whole sound. You hear the whole range. The, the bass is not muddy. It's crisp, but it moves the room, you know, from the kettle drums, uh, the, the high ends from the violins, and and the, the, are are crisp and clear and and there's a spatialness th th to it. It's around you. You know where everything's coming from. That's the gold standard. That's what you're aiming for. No, and it's very difficult to reproduce that in any home system. Uh, but a good stereo system with at least two speakers, a subwoofer, maybe even more, maybe a surround sound system. And I, this doesn't have to be expensive. You could probably put it together for $1,000. A lot of people are getting rid of their good speakers. If you go on to eBay or somewhere, you can get some pretty darn good speakers, a lot less than they used to be. Um, you know, get some nice B&Os or some Rebel speakers, a great amplifier. Thirty, forty thousand $40,000 later, you're getting as close as you could to the full sound of an orchestra. You're hearing as much of the music as you can hear in your home. But as you reduce the number of speakers, as you reduce the bass, as you get the speaker smaller and more convenient, you're reducing all the sound you're hearing. And so a good comparison for this, and I did this for, as the minute we got this, I put this in my, I have a nice stereo system with good, not expensive speakers, Epiphone speakers, and I put it in, in a nice uh, Epiphone sub, and I put it in there, and I listened to the same song switching back and forth using AirPlay, so we... We're using the same technology to play it. And you can, and I played it for Lisa, who is not a trained listener. And she said and agreed with me, yes, when you're listening on the stereo, you're hearing a whole lot more music. You're hearing a whole lot more of the stuff. This sounds great. I mean, if you play music on this, if we start listening to music, it sounds great. It also does something that a lot of speakers this size don't do well. It gets loud very well.
So when you're listening to this without comparing it to anything else, you're going to say, wow, that sounds really good. But if you compare it to, certainly if you brought it and set it in the middle of a symphony, it wouldn't sound as good. But even a good stereo, it won't sound as good. Even in my opinion, a good pair of larger speakers with a sub, it won't sound as good. Uh, the fact that it sounds as good as similarly sized KEF means they've designed a speaker uh, as well as you can design a small speaker like this. <clears throat> but Apple's really pushing this as kind of the future of music. And I, I just want to make people understand what you're getting if you're gonna if you need a speaker this size if you need a speaker that's not stereo left and right if you need a speaker you can walk around and it sounds good everywhere a speaker you can play loud this is a good choice for a party in the kitchen this is a great choice i mean in a way isn't this always what apple has been doing in terms of it's a you know it for its size like they're always touting the picture quality on your ipad pro or even on your iphone and you're not comparing that to your hdr you know television so it's, it's sort of apple's gig for everything yeah. they do they're like this is the best you can get in this size i agree this is the best you can get in this size this yeah. is an android phone but you yeah. know what i mean <laughs> so a lot of credit to them for designing something really good for the size of it but it, and i was sold a little bit when i first started reading about this before i heard it uh, uh you know the idea of computational audio that you could with uh i mean this has a this has an iphone 6 chip in it this has this has an A8 processor in it. This is a very very big processor in here uh, that you could, with processing, perhaps simulate a fuller sound. But physics always gets in the way, and a four-inch subwoofer, no matter how high excursion, can only move a certain amount of air. The the tweeters this size, no matter how many there are, can only reproduce a certain amount of the music. And so you just you're, you're getting, I think, what sounds fantastic as long as you understand and uh, you know the limits of it. There's some more limits, by the way, big limits mm -hmm. in terms of what it can play. There's no reason to buy this at all if you want to listen to anything but Apple's music, right? You can, you can only airplay to it. There's no Bluetooth. It doesn't support any other services. Don't think of this as computer speakers. Actually, Apple delays, I didn't know this, but when I read the Reddit review, Apple delays the sound by a few seconds. So there's a few seconds latency. So this would be a terrible computer speaker. That's why they didn't put Bluetooth in for a smartphone. <laughs> it would be a terrible phone experience. Uh, I imagine they do that as a buffering for AirPlay. Now, they're going to upgrade this. It, again, it has a very good processor and it has it's a computer. They're going to upgrade it to AirPlay 2. At that point, they, a couple of new features will come in. You'll be able to take two of them and pair them and get a stereo pair.